Hello there, my name is Craig Fell, and this is my game, it's called Pixel Adventure. Today we're going to take a look at how to play the game as well as some of the features that are in the game. So as you'll see here, we just hit start. And the first thing that we're presented with is the character creator. The character creator um, is a spot to change aspects of the character. As you can see, we can change either a hairstyle or a helmet. Uh, there was plans to change skin color and stuff like that, but uh, that was scrapped near the end. So we'll just change his hair color and we will start. Okay, so as you can see, there's a dialogue system that uh, starts up. And what a nice day, honey. Is, uh, and you can see that she is the one that's talking here. And uh, he can reply. Now, you'll notice that whenever animations are changing, there is a blank frame here. I couldn't get rid of that, but uh, that is what's triggering the frame animations. So whenever one of these comes up, the movie clip in behind changes frames. So as you can see, the zombies are kind of wrecking his barbecue here. but he's relatively unscathed. He didn't even really notice anything until ah, he took his girlfriend. But more importantly, she had his cooking supplies. So let's start our adventure. So as you can see, as soon as the game starts, uh, the character has the hair that we gave him in the character creator. Uh, the reason that it didn't have that in the dialogue system is because the dialogue uh, movie clip in behind is just images. It's not dynamic. It doesn't have the, the character movie clip. So um, we started in the exact same spot as the cutscene, if we call it that, exited. And we use the arrow keys. Um, we use right to go right, left to go left, and up to jump. You can hold it and hold either one of them, it doesn't really matter. You can use them in combination, jump at an angle. And the last key is uh, the spacebar, and that pauses the game. Um, animations keep going, um, you'll see for the coins, but the timer has stopped. If you keep track of the timer, we are at roughly 25 seconds, and I've been talking for at least 5, so we should be at 30 if it's failing. However, it's at 25. It's pretty good. These are coins. They are worth one point. As you can see, the score is moving up. You can walk in behind things. You can walk in front of things. There's also power-ups. So, as you can see here, we have a zombie head. But if we watch the timer, it's going to finish after 10 seconds. And then we're going to go back to how we were. Uh, basically, it's just removing a child at the last position in the uh, child array. So we're just grabbing some stuff here. We got hot dogs, and we stumble upon one of these. It's a sign that uh, that warns you of things to come. So uh, don't fall in holes. Fairly simple. There's a hole right here. So um, we can test this right here, or we can just jump ahead a little bit and we touch a checkpoint sign. Okay, checkpoint, midway through the level, what happens when we die? We start back at the checkpoint sign, but we can't move until three seconds have went by. It's kind of a little delay to let you know, okay, you've died, a little message appears above your head, says you died. Um, otherwise, people are instantly spawning and wondering, what just happened? Did I do something? Especially when they touch spikes or uh, they used to think they were rocks. So we just keep collecting things. But remember that power-up that we had a little while ago? Uh, as you can see, we got a zombie coming up. Um, so the power-up gave us the power of the zombies. Uh, basically it made us invincible to zombies for the 10 seconds. Let's grab that extra life. Get our zombie power so we can walk right past the zombies. 
and move right on through. So now we're in level two. Level two is much like level one. One thing you may notice, and I'm giving credit to it right now, is that level one and level two are based on world one, uh, level one of uh, Super Mario Brothers. Based on, it's not a one to one. I couldn't make my levels that long at the time. Right now the levels are roughly 4,000 pixels long. But you can see the flag from World 1-1 one -one is there. Let's grab the meat. I don't know if it's the video recording or the game itself, but uh, my character is disappearing for brief amounts of time. Um, I'm going to blame it on the video because not normally happening in my playthroughs. Um, here is another warning, uh, just letting you know that these violent things in front of you were spikes. I used to have things that looked a little more cheery like the background and people thought they were rocks. And they'd walk into them multiple times and not be able to move forward. They would think that the game was glitching. Um, as you can see here, I'm just simply stacking bushes on top of each other. Uh, kind of an interesting thing when you're making the levels and you find that stacking things on top of each other make things that you didn't anticipate, like really long things that kind of look like cactuses. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. So this is level three and it's a, oh, I died. And now I can't move for three seconds. Um, yeah, so this is a vertical level, the only vertical level that I have. The only thing that can really kill you in here is spikes, or if I put enemies. But uh, we got a checkpoint. I made sure that all the checkpoint arrows were pointing in the direction that you should be going. And there are little hidden things, like if we go here, we get a life. A nice little one up. I don't know if it's safe to go like that, so I'm just going to fall down. If you wanted to get really involved in the programming, you could check how long the player had been falling, and then determine if that was going to do damage to him or not. So if I fell from for two seconds, I might die. But if I f fall for one, I might not. Something like that really got to watch out for these spikes. I kind of put them in random little places. So now we're on level four. Got to collect everything. And we'll kill those zombies. We could have went down there, but we can also go here, but we just got to be careful not to fall. some condiments and now we are on the fifth and final level it really doesn't take that long to get through these levels uh, you could probably make a ton of them to last any substantial time or you can put puzzles in there uh, require the character to push blocks uh, to flip switches, open doors, that sort of thing, that will definitely slow the person down. So we've got a zombie head here, so we can zoom through the zombies. And you'll see numbers popping up as I walk through here. I've hidden coins and hot dogs and other collectibles behind the bushes, which is something you could do. That's kind of where the zombie head was there and we grab the charcoal. So as you can see here, we've got all of the barbecue supplies that we sought out to seek, uh, one for each level. And uh, he's glad everything's over, so let's cook some food. Oh, look at that. He made a ton of food. It's been a great day. But now it's nighttime, and uh, the girlfriend 
Well, I'm sure she's fine. And then end the game. Uh, now, as you can see here, this is the, the high score list. And uh, we didn't finish the game super fast. So uh, the multiplier is only a 1.0. Basically what that's stating is that each level was completed in over 60 seconds. Um, also you will notice that our score was 5,435. There are trailing zeros after that that are fixed to only two decimal places. The reason for this is to facilitate the multiplier. The multiplier is anywhere from 1.0 to 1.5. Uh, I would say that it's rather impossible to get a 1.5, but fairly easy to get a 1.3. 1.3 would be 40 seconds through the level. Um, as you can see, the high score is not a number, man. Um, it's showing up like this right now because this is just a um, local copy that isn't taking advantage of the shared object, if that makes sense. Uh, if I was to upload this or run it through the debugger, then uh, your score would show up. This is just a... I'm just running that SWF file locally in a folder. So I think some things go on there and it doesn't actually talk, but uh, I will show you how that works in the debug version. So I'm going to get over here. And I'm still on level one. I'm just going to die three times and we're going to see what happens. Okay, as you can see here, my score was only 31, but the important thing is I did not finish the game. I, I didn't finish the level or anything like that, so my multiplier is 1. It's not going to be anything other than 1. If you die and you, like, you exit the game because of it running out of lives, your multiplier is 1. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to show. Let me see here. I've got tutorial signs, five all new levels, one-ups, pause button, zombie power-up, tutorial signs, a story, a dialogue system, and a character creator. All right, looks good. So I'm going to end the video here. Okay, now I'm going to do a speed run just to show you the multiplier. Let's give ourselves a hockey helmet this time. Let's go. So far we're doing pretty good. That was definitely... You kind of keep going the way that you were going. As soon as the level starts. See, like right now, yeah, so... He always wants to start going right which would work out in most platformers, but for some reason I decided to have my character loop back to where he started. So you end up going left for two levels. 